my thanks also goes to organizers of the conference. And I'm going to like go straight ahead uh, that because uh, I'm a little bit worried that I'm slightly, that I have slightly a little bit more words. But uh, yeah, uh, and of course, I want to mention at the beginning that uh, I slightly changed my uh, like initial topic and abstract of my paper. And I'm rather going to focus on vernacular photography, but I still strongly believe that in my paper, there are a lot of connections to uh, the scientific and uh, art uh, art photography. So uh, yeah, so let me start. Uh, in fact, I would like to give you today a short commentary on a particular bias or a tendency I have recently noticed in the various niches of contemporary vernacular photography, which is the central area of my uh, research interests. Talking about the bias or tendency, uh, I mean that vernacular photography is increasingly becoming a meta photography, meta photography. This is to say photographs more and more often do not stand for something other than themselves as they represent processes of their becoming. They stand for themselves, then they are photographs of photography, as is the title of my paper. However, Contrary to experimental, conceptual, and uh, let's say artistic research, meta photography and metamedia counter practices, questioning the technical nature of photography and its social and cultural position, the meta photographization of the vernacular is not at all subversive and revealing. The reason for this, as I will argue, is that meta pictorial practices and operations. Uh, that have been incorporated into the program of apparatuses and through this incorporation, they were deprived of their subversive capacity. Recently, uh, I have analyzed how this sort of, uh, let me say, toothless metapictoriality without revelation and subversion has been incorporated into the conception of photography constructed around the Lomography brand which shelters one of the largest contemporary community of analog photography enthusiasts. As Anna already mentioned, uh, one of the papers uh, that's going to be published very soon in Edinburgh Press, uh, I already like described this process and analyzed uh, this process in this paper. And so that's why I, for today, uh, I realized to, uh, and I decided to leave my favorite Lomography example uh, and uh, instead, uh, as the illustration uh, on my title slide indicates, I will focus on computational photography, which is a sort of mad science. This is the quotation of this, uh, of this uh, Apple designer. Uh, this is the mad science example of a broader meta photography term in vernacular photography. So to support the argument about the metaphotographic conditions of computation of photographer, photography, the paper proceeds in uh, two moves, basically. First, I briefly introduce the conceptions of uh, metaphotography and metaphoto uh, metapicturality and metaphotography and related to Willem Flusser's call for playing against the apparatus. Uh, Second, I will present two comparative dittishes, dittish, uh, showing examples of experimental and conceptual uh, metaphotography practice, practices, and on the other side, examples of metapictorial operations recently introduced to vernacular photography by the two specific technological innovations. In fact, I'm going to talk about uh, Google Clips camera and uh, about the uh, two latest models of uh, iPhone. The purpose of these comparisons is to illustrate the revealing capacity of meta pictures on one side and the loss of this capacity on the other side. Uh, well, uh, just to introduce the conceptions of uh, meta pictoriality or meta images or meta media or these meta discourses, uh, let me say that to engage critically and reflexively with photography is commonly the domain of scholars and artists who question and problematize the routine and unreflected ways uh, we use photography for our everyday purposes. In this sense, it was uh, basically Willem Flusser who in his book, uh, Towards the Philosophy of Photography proposed that only experimental photographers uh, in 
fact consciously attempting to create unpre unpredictable information that is to release themselves from the camera and to place within the image something that is not in its program. They know they are playing in the camera. So according to Flusser, experimental photography is a sort of uh, like the basic approach, how to question the uh, technology of the apparatus. This Flusser's calling for playing against the camera and photography can be understood in the sense uh, of the conception of meta pictures as William Mitchell introduced it uh, in his book, Picture Theory. Meta pictures as defined by Mitchell are pictures that might be capable of reflection on themselves, capable of providing a second order discourse that tells us, or at least show us something about pictures. They are pictures that refer to themselves or to other pictures pictures that are used to show what a picture is. These are the end of quotation. In this self-reflection lies the capacity of an image to reveal and question the processes as convention and conventions of its production, its institutional setting, its historical positionality, and its address to beholders. Well, recently several authors, for example, Mark Lennart in his uh, book, uh, Jouet contre les appareils, uh, Robert Shaw in his post photography, The Artist with the Camera, or for example, Ernst von Alphen in his failed images, photography and its contra practices, further elaborated on both Flusser's and Mitchell's conceptions, offering a, basically an extensive list of artists and their experimental techniques. And uh, in fact, it's very difficult to summarize and illustrate uh, experimental, what experimental photographers, photographers do with photography. Experimental photographers thus, for example, intervene in the relationship of photography uh, to light in the sense that they push photography to the verge of the visible. They problematize photography, te photography's temporality using extremely long expositions lasting for months or even years. Through this slow photography approach, they question the in instantaneousness of the snapshot. Illustrative examples of such, uh, sorry, of such uh, approaches or of such long uh, exposures uh, could be, uh, could be uh, for example, Japanese photographer Hiroshi, Hiroshi Sugimoto and German photographer Michael Vesely or Michael Vesely. Sugimoto is taking the uh, images, uh, they are very famous uh, of these, uh, of these uh, cinemas and uh, the exposition time is always uh, the same as is the footage of the film that is screened uh, on the uh, on the screen in the cinema. And Michal Vesely, he's uh, using really long expositions, like for example, in this photograph, he's uh, uh, like taking the image for the time uh, through which the train from Hamburg to Munich uh, was uh, like traveling. So it was uh, like uh, nine hours. And uh, some of his other images, uh, the exposition times are, uh, let's say even in years, like for example, in this example, uh, more than two, uh, more than two years. Other experimentations focused on uh, photography's materiality, mainly in the form of interventions into the developing and printing processes, using expert photo materials, uh, underdeveloped or overdeveloped negatives, double or multiple expositions, unfixed, and thus, when exposed to light, slowly degrading and disappearing photograph, as is the example. Uh, my favorite one, uh, and also very uh, well known, uh, of slowly disappearing photographs could be the uh, Heather Ackroyd and Dan uh, Harvey's Hrolofell prints, uh, because they are using grass as a living photographic medium, and uh, when this, these images are exposed to light, they are slowly uh, simply disappearing. In addition, photography can be, uh, can be uh, uh, countered through a diverse range of hex, uh, re and deconstructions of cameras and their sensors, binary code of digital images, variety of reappropriations, creative misuses of technology, repurposing photographic equipment, etc., etc. In this way, uh, all these uh, experimental uh, attacks or subversions uh, to the mainstream notion of photography challenge our everyday experience of the perceptual and deviate from the practice of the snapshot. And this is the quotation from Van Alphen. 
They, they make visible the inside of the black box and the processes that occur within it, the quotation of Mark Lennox. In so doing, experimental photography reveals the medium to itself and destabilizes the usual spectator's relationship to photography. So uh, one of the most promising way to sort of conclude this uh, part of my paper, uh, one of the most promising ways of uh, to answer the Flusser score for play against the program of the apparatus, thus remains in the production of uh, what, that what we could call meta pictures. These images that simply saying record their own condition of existence. And now uh, uh, let me uh, continue with my first comparative diptych, diptych of um, or diptych of um, meta photographs. Uh, let me start with this one, this example. Uh, this is the camera created by Dan McNish, uh, who is an Australian uh, artist and a thinker, recently created an instant camera he calls Draw This. That is a camera that draws doodle cartoons instead of making photographs. He experiments with neural networks for object recognition, asking the camera and its specifically arranged program to reinterpret the photographic image. A camera operator never gets to see the original image. He or she gets only a cartoon. The original, let's say, photographic data are erased after they are transformed to the cartoon. It exactly works, to quote uh, the description uh, given by Dan McNish, uh, in the following way. Camera is a mashup of a neural network for object recognition, the Google QuickDraw dataset, a thermal mashup, and a Raspberry Pi. I begin by setting up an image processing pipeline in Python to grab images and recognize, it, recognize the objects in them using the pre-trained models from Google. At the same time, I explored the QuickDraw dataset and map the categories available in the data set with the categories recognizable by the image processor. Just to have a better view of the images, uh, we can take this one illustration. Well, uh, the camera and images it produces are thus a meta pictorial commentary of an instant camera, instant sharing capabilities uh, of camera phones and the fleeting nature of contemporary photography. However, most importantly, it is the intervention into the black box of the digital camera. It is a caricature of the algorithmic nature of computational photography and its uh, operations. In a very similar way, operates Google Clips camera, the second part of my first diptych. It is the representative of one of the most recent innovations that were des designed for family photography uses. It is a miniature, hands-free, fully automatic and autonomous artificial intelligence camera able to recognize and capture memorable family moments occurring within the range of its 130 degree lens field of view. Following mainly Google's promotional formulas, passing the camera from the hands of a human operators to machines and artificial intelligence frees family members from traditional photographic labor. Google argues that without being interrupted by the act of picture taking, by the act of holding the camera and pressing the button, one can enjoy everyday family life more spontaneously and authentically. Google Clips allows its users to make not only an authentic record of their life, but also to make the life itself more authentic. Uh, what is, uh, I'm slightly struggling here, okay, uh, with my slides. Important is that photographs that are created by this camera are in fact, again, meta photographs, similar, yet of course, slightly different, but the process is similar to drawings produced by McNish draw this camera. It just only uses different data sets and uses them not to transform the digital code of photographs into something else, but to recognize and capture and put in order as it's nicely visible on the scheme, that what is photographable in reality. So in this sense, the meta picture is even the moment of exposition as the camera decides what, uh, what to photograph by constantly comparing that what it sees with a data set of complexly selected features of good family photographs. 
Using Atelier on device machine intelligence, it is even able to learn to focus on the people most often appearing in front of its lenses. And it also learns what makes for a beautiful and memorable photograph. It does never, for example, press the button when there are hands or fingers in front of the camera, as very often happened in just, uh, let's say, uh, usual vernacular or family photography. When the camera is not stable, uh, it never fires when it is in the pocket or purse. It, detect, uh, family, it detects familiar faces and tries to frame them in the center uh, of a photograph and so on and so on. The Google Clips, in fact, does not shoot still images, but short video clips. Another metaphotographic moment thus comes when the user starts editing and selecting images automatically and autonomously taken by the camera. User preview the clips by streaming them from the camera to the smartphones. And now this one could, should be playable. So you can watch the, this visualization. And uh, just a brief description on the far left, uh, just how the images are like uh, operated and processed by the user. On the far left, users choose which clips they want to save uh, to their phone. In the middle, they can toggle on a suggested view. And on the right, users can pinpoint the exact frame they want to save as a still photo. These are metaphotographic acts as users still compare, understand, give meaning to and select photographs in comparison and, confront, and in confrontation with the entire recordings a camera has created. Google Clips thus offers a metapictorial representation of the family life because images are created and selected on the background of other images in the data sets the camera uses and gradually enriches with those images selected and kept by the user. In this sense, uh, uh, in this sense, it was successful more or less. Uh, as mentioned by Dan Seifer, who reviewed the camera for the magazine Verge, most of the clips I have been able to capture didn't look better or feel more authentic than what I am already able to do with my phone or a dedica dedicated camera. So this sort of disappointment of users that they didn't get from Google Clips something special, but just ordinary images is in fact the confirmation that the algorithms and artificial intelligence and machine learning implemented into the camera was in fact success successful because it was the aim of the designers to create automatic camera that will simply shoot family images. And this fact of uh, generating usual standard conventional family snaps is the moment when the metapictorial nature of the Google Clips camera definitely, definitely uh, loses its reveal, revealing potential. Metapictorial operations remains enclosed in the camera black box and further veiled by ordinariness of images kept by its users and selected by its users. Well, uh, now uh, let me uh, at least briefly move to my uh, second uh, diptych uh, that's going to deal with the uh, iPhone cameras. And, but let me start uh, with John Hilliard's camera recording its own condition. Uh, uh, this uh, art piece is uh, labeled the seven approaches, 10 speeds and two mirrors. And in my view, it is an excellent example of conceptual metaphotography of camera operations. Here, the camera serves as a device for creating images as well as the object of its own recording capacities. Hilliard points his 35 millimeter single lens camera at the mirror and took shots at every possible aperture and shutter speed setting. In this sense, I read it or read this piece as a metaphotographic illustration of Flusser's remarks on the functioning of black box and automated apparatuses. Quoting Flusser, the functionary controls the apparatus thanks to the control of its exterior, the input and output, and is controlled by it thanks to the impenetrability of its interior. To put it in another way, functionaries control a game over which they have no competence. What we can see on the Hilliard's uh, conceptual piece are images that record their own conditions of existence and thus metapictorial comment on black box, black box nature 
of a camera and limited capacity of a photographer to operate the camera. Hilliard's camera recording in sound condition seems to be very similar to how recent models of iPhone 11 and 12 operates when generating a new category of computational photography. I'm almost sure that Google designers uh, didn't know anything about John Hilliard, but it's just, let's say, a sort of metaphorical connection. Uh, these new iPhones are perfect combinations of hardware capabilities, like uh, they are equipped with triple lens camera setup, a depth sensing imaging technology LIDAR, ultra fast processors, and so on, and software and algorithmic capacities, namely so called smart, high dynamic range, and deep fusion processing technology. Now I'm going to briefly describe how, how iPhone works, particularly, and I'm go particularly going to focus on the deep fusion, uh, deep fusion te technology. Particularly deep fusion advanced machine learning enables some pixels by pixel manipulation of photos. It reduces noise and enhances ultra fine details, exposes the varied tonal reg regions separately, increases contrast. However, so for such operations, iPhone needs data. It needs to record the scene to be depicted in a variety of possible camera conditions, like similar to Hilliard's uh, uh, art piece. So the resulting image on the user, uh, one the user sees on the screen is not a result of a single exposure. The iPhone takes a multitude of exposures and computationally merge them together. It takes and combines eight single images, in fact. Four of these images are even taken by the iPhone before a user press the button. The iPhone shoots images as soon as a user opens a camera app and when a finger touches the shutter button, the iPhone grabs a photo it had already taken before a user even touched the screen and combines this photography with other seven already taken or photos taken just in an instant. The resulting photograph is in fact, a meta photograph of all the eight photographs iPhone takes and operates. Uh, let me, uh, for just briefly, uh, last uh, few words, let me go back to the image I already used on my title slide. It is a cropped screenshot I took from the video recording of the September 2019 Apple's event, when a new iPhone Pro camera system and mainly Apple's deep fusion computational photography system were for the first time introduced. It is the still image taken from the video recording, of an event during which one of the Apple designers points to a photograph projected on the large screen. He explains how deep fusion works and pointing to the circled part of the image, he demonstrates that it gives stunning, almost 3D depictions of surfaces and textures. Showing also other images taken by iPhone 11, he tries to convince the audience that these images are still photographs depicting the real. Sure, we can recognize the referent, the figure and the face of, the, of a model, the texture of the fabric of a sweater, pillow of a sofa and a curtain at the background. But it is not a photograph anymore. It is a computational photograph, which means that it is a mix of computational selections, croppings and superimpositions of eight separate images taking and taking and processed by an iPhone. And by this closeness of the final result of the iPhone, I again believe that uh, it is a sort of incorporation of the, uh, let's say, metapictural practices they're using for the purposes of the Apple. And like, again, hiding and concealing them, uh, uh, like, and wailing them uh, behind this uh, very perfect images that in fact are not single photographs at all. So uh, yeah, I think that this could be, uh, let's say uh, my final argument and I already have one more slide, but uh, there is another meta picture practice related to iPhone and it, uh, it, it is the case of post-production uh, of the images because for example, because of this like uh, deep fusion of eight separate images, it is very simple just only by like uh, drawing this, uh, grabbing this uh, slide bar uh, to change, for example, the depth of the field of the image. And in this sense, uh, sort of rephotograph uh, the image uh, and in fact uh, nullify 
the decisive moment of uh, the moment when the photograph was taken because uh, we can very simply like uh, change even the settings that used to be unchangeable uh, before computational photography. So uh, yes, this is my final comment. Thanks for listening.